This time like in this video we are looking at reciprocal and inverse trigonometric functions. So first of all we need to look at what a reciprocal trigonometric function is and there are three main ones that we need to learn. So the first one is 1 over sine theta and this goes to cosec theta and by this you can tell by the third letter. This third letter here is s that means it's sine. Then 1 over cos theta goes to sec theta. Now again, we can tell by the third letter, and that's a C there. And in reality, it would be secant, but we only need to know it as sec for the purposes of this. And then the final one is 1 over tan theta. Again, this would be cotangent, but we only need to learn by the third letter, and that T. And that is how you remember which one is which. So let's put this into a question. And this question says that for minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees, and x is between that, what is sec x minus 10 degrees and equal to 3? So first of all, we're going to transform sec, and we're going to put that into this one here, so 1 over cos theta. So this means that what we're going to get is 1 over cos and then it's going to be x minus 10. And then this is all equal to 3. So therefore, what we have is 1 is equal to 3 cos x minus 10. And by doing this step, we've got it what we would normally see as when you're solving a true identity. So now all we need to do is make it a third is equal to cos x minus 10. Then we're going to do an inverse function. So we're going to go get cos minus 1 to a third is equal to x minus 10. Therefore, x minus 10 is equal to plus or minus 70.5. And this is because we can see it's plus or minus if we were to draw out the graph of cos. So for example, if we were to draw out the graph here, and it goes like that. There we are, and then we're going to put a third round there. And even though it's not perfectly drawn, we can tell that this is symmetrical. So therefore it's gonna be plus 70.5 there, and minus 70.5 there. So this means that finally we just need to add 10 to both of them. So we know that x is going to be equal to 80.5, and then also minus 60. Point five, And that is our final answer for that particular question. So the next thing to look at is two identities that you have to learn, and these include sec, cos, cosec, and cotan. But this is the one we've already seen, it's sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And we will be using this to find these two new equations. So first of all, to get the first equation, we're going to divide everything by cos squared theta. So that means that what we're going to have is if we do sine squared theta divided by cos squared theta, therefore we are going to get tan squared theta. There we are. And then that's using the rule that sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. So therefore, if we just use 2 squared, then we're going to get the tan squared theta. Then if we do cos squared theta over cos squared theta, we're going to get 1. So that's tan squared theta plus 1. And that is going to be equal to 1 over cos squared theta. And that is going to be equal to sec squared theta. And we know this because that's the C is the third one. So that's cos 
and this is one over cos and then because it's over cos squared theta that means it is going to be sec squared theta. So next thing to do is to divide it all by sine squared theta and this time sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is equal to 1. There we are. Then cos squared theta over sine squared theta. Now in this one we had sine squared theta over cos squared theta which was tan squared theta so if we take the inverse of that that means that we're going to get cot squared theta if you remember one over tan theta is cot theta and then that is equal to one over sine squared theta this time we've got the one with s as a third one which is cosec so that means that we've got cosec squared theta. So again, these have to be learnt, but it's a lot easier if you just remember this one and then you can do what we've just done here by dividing it. As it's not harmful, uh, hard maths, so it's easier to derive it from there. So the last question here is just incorporating everything that we've learned so far in this video. It says 3 sine theta minus 2 cosec theta is equal to 1 and we're looking at the range between 0 and 360. So first of all what we want to do is get rid of this cosec theta by putting a 1 over something. So that means that I am going to rewrite this as 3 sine theta, we'll keep that there for now. then minus, and because the third one is an S, that means it's gonna be minus two times one over sine theta, which we can just make two over sine theta is equal to one. And the good news here is we all have it in sine theta and we that's all we want. We don't want sines and cos and tans. We all just want it as one thing. And here we all have sine theta. So the next thing to do is to times it all by sine theta. And this is to get rid of this here. 3 sine squared theta minus 2 is equal to sine theta. So you may be able to see a quadratic equation coming along now. And to make this a complete quadratic equation in a normal form, we'll make it 3 sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 2 is equal to 0. But I prefer, you can still do it with a sine, I prefer if you change a sine theta and just say that let sine theta equal something else. So for example, we can say w. So this means that we're going to get 3w squared minus w minus 2 is equal to 0. Then we can factorize it and therefore we're going to get what w is equal to 1 and w is equal to minus two thirds. But in fact, because we let sine theta equal w, then we can actually say that sine theta is equal to one. So first of all, sine theta is equal to one. And we do sine minus one of one. That gives us 90 degrees. Again, if we did 180 minus 90, which you do to find the next one, that would again give us 90 degrees. So we've only got one answer there, which is in the range. Then we've also got sine theta is equal to minus two thirds. So therefore sine minus one of minus two thirds is equal and therefore we have minus 41.8, that this is not in the range. Then we get 221.8, and we get this from doing minus 41.8 minus 
um, and then we do 180 minus that. So 180 minus minus 41.8 is equal to 221.8. And again, if we wanted to, we could draw the graph to show where this is coming from. So the sine graph looks something like that. And there we're looking at minus two thirds, so say that's around there. That's our minus 41.8. And then there is over 180, that's our 221.8. And as you can see, there's still another one to get. And that one is going to be 318.2. And we get that from doing minus 1.8 plus 360. But we can get rid of this one because that's not in the range. So therefore, our final answers, we have 90 degrees. We've got 221.8 degrees. And then we have 318.2 degrees. And there we are, that is our final answer for this particular question, incorporating a lot of different things that we've learned today, as well as previous knowledge about trigonometry. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.